or cowpers. Even though such a long existence may seem to last forever, it does come to an end at last. A hundred years in the heavens of enjoyment seems to last no longer than a human day. So the years slip by rapidly until the enjoyer of bliss, a deva or god, is reborn in human form. This happens when one exhausts the store of merit produced by good deeds as a human being, just as purgatorial sufferings end when one exhausts the evil karma that produced them. Buddhists believe that all world systems like the one we've been discussing sooner or later must come to an end. This is caused in part by the declining level of moral and religious life among its inhabitants. Theravada Buddhists understand this lower level of living to be inevitable, as are its consequences. Every so many eons, the Earth universe is destroyed by fire, water, and then wind. Indeed, all of the physical world disappears, as well as 20 of the 31 planes of existence, including that of the completely lustrous gods. Unless residents of these planes have already escaped through repentance or righteous deeds, they apparently are cast into other world systems at their current levels of existence. Eons later, its particles may form a new universe. Like the Hindus, Buddhists do not recognize any absolute beginning to the appearance of these world systems. This series of cycles is considered to have always existed, just as it always will exist. So, uh, for the Mahayana school in Buddhism, the Bodhisattva ideal or the Bodhisattva vow is the one of the most important things. So it's not just doing good or saving people, but um, it's her life and it's her way to be shared with everybody. Okay. Mongolia and Tibet, the word that means high priest is Lama. A new Dalai Lama is chosen by a slow and deliberate process. A few years after a Dalai Lama's death, a search committee of respected elder monks is chosen. These monks gather certain articles, including some used by the just deceased Dalai Lama. Then they tour the countryside to search for young boys who were born after the last Dalai Lama died. The true successor, the reborn Dalai Lama, is the one who unerringly picks out the genuine articles belonging to the deceased Dalai Lama. He is then taken to the great central monastery at Lhasa, where he is trained for his new role as the Buddhist God King. To create a new Zamandala, a tantric disciple puts himself under the guidance of his spiritual master. Then he slowly and painstakingly creates or goes over the mandala pattern. This is done step by step, using one's total attention. This might be called the Tibetan Buddhist style of psychoanalysis. To Buddhists, it is in keeping with the Buddhist message that within ourselves, each of us finds salvation from the restless suffering the impermanence and the emptiness of human existence. Tibetan Buddhists also use the mantra, which means sacred utterance in Sanskrit. Indeed, one must concentrate upon the mantra if it is to be effective. And Tibetan Buddhism has sometimes been called 
Mantrayana Buddhism because of its extensive use of mantras. Mantras are ritual chants, and they had earlier been used in connection with Brahmanical sacrificial rituals. Mantras were viewed as power-filled words to help one achieve various results. And Tibetan Buddhism easily adapted them to its own non-sacrificial use. One prominent mantra is a famous six-syllable phrase chanted ritually over and over. Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Om As with the sacred circle of the mandala, the sacred syllables of the mantra are to be made a part of oneself. They are used to rid oneself of impurities, to attain higher and higher spiritual states, and finally to achieve spiritual liberation. One last special feature of Tibetan Buddhism is Bardo, a Tibetan Buddhist teaching about the process of dying. Here, as with the mandala, a dying person confronts various shapes, such as demons, gods, and bodhisattvas. These are understood to be that person's own internal good-bad traits in graphic form. In Tibetan Buddhism, death is considered to be a gradual transition to a new life, lasting perhaps as long as seven days. A spiritual attendant repeats directions and encouragements in the ear of the individual who is dying. Thus, Tibetan Buddhism ensures a safe passage to a new and good existence. Buddhism originally had entered Japan in the mid-6th century from Korea, where it had been active since the late 4th century. A Buddha image was given to the Japanese emperor, along with some monk priests who could give ritual performances. From this small beginning, Buddhism became a major religious and cultural force in Japan for about a thousand years. So by incorporating all of these local deities, all of the local spirits, uh, they were able to uh, incorporate the people of that place into the Buddhist tradition by accepting and by being extremely tolerant of local religious traditions. It's one of the reasons I think that Buddhism has never been involved in religious warfare. Uh, they do not require people to give up their local spirit in order to become a Buddhist. One of the new, uniquely Japanese sects was called Shingon, which means true word. Shingon was established in the early 9th century at a great temple center on Mount Koya, some 50 miles from Kyoto in the southern half of Japan's main island of Honshu. Shingon, or true word, is not a scripture so much as it is a group of mantras from two Indian scriptures. The proper use and meaning of these mantras are revealed only to Shingon initiates. So Shingon is called esoteric or secret teaching Buddhism. An esoteric Buddhist sect had once been located on these mountains at the time of Saicho, founder of Tendai Buddhism. Saicho, a devout 8th, 9th century Japanese monk from Nara, was seeking to escape the influence of Japan's nearby royal court when he moved far away to Japan's Mount Hiei, overlooking the modern city of Kyoto. But in 794, Japan's royal court moved to Kyoto, and Saicho was no longer isolated. Indeed, Saicho became a person of consequence at the court, and he was allowed to go to study at the Tiantai headquarters in China for some eight months. The Japanese monk Honan founded what's known as Jodo, or Pure Land Buddhism. 